All right, we're back with another episode of Tarot Talks. This is going to be Judgment 20. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here in this series. We're almost finished up. So I did realize in the last video it was the only one that I didn't switch out the cards and do a secondary reading with the same major arcana card, but I'm not going to go back and reshoot it. It is what it is. Um, so, and I also realized I am not giving you all the esoteric information with each card because I already gave it to you. You know, it's all, it's all there for you in the past series. And this is going to be how to actually read the cards. And in a lot of readings, you're not going to go that esoteric because we're dealing with mundane situations in mundane lives. Sometimes you will, and sometimes you won't. It just depends on the person you're talking to. Sometimes people come to you and they don't really believe all the mumbo jumbo shit. So you got to keep it really, um... Well, things that they believe to be mumbo jumbo, not not the spiritual community. We see a lot of realness in the way that these planets and um, esoteric messages, esoteric imagery, archetypes, how they come across to us, how they translate in life. Like we see stories out of that. Some people can't. So you got to keep it on a level of their understanding, which would be in the mundane life, the exoteric. Okay. So judgment is ruled by... I forgot it's ruled by Pluto. There you go. Um, so I do have, again, if you're new to this channel, I do have the planetary associations on the back of the cards. I do have a working knowledge of the cards. So what's on the back of them for me is going to be the, um, the elements and the astrological association, like third deacon of Gemini, first deacon of Cancer. So this means it's a specific time of year that this card relates to in the astrological wheel, in in the uh, the seasons of life. Um, this also represents the fourth house of the zodiac. So this is always a Scorpio woman to me. So there we go. So the Scorpio woman or the woman with this dark intensity. This is someone whose dark and intense nature is perverted. It's not being used right. So this manifests in overly sexual, very promiscuous, um, someone who uses their sexuality to get what they want. So this is like sugar babies or gold diggers. Um, so when judgment shows up with this, this is a very deep lesson that needs to be learned. And judgment is always like a hold up type of card. Like there's a stop and a look, whereas this also, what other card also has these stop and look and stop and reflect feelings are going to be the hanged man and also the four of swords. So those are, those are hang up cards. Those are like, hold, hold up a minute. Those are pauses. Uh, we also have a pause feeling when we get the, uh, emperor, emperor four. So because four is a plateau always. But this is 20. So what this is, is this is when you get to the teens, you're going to, you're going through a process with prior knowledge. And now this is the end of that process with prior knowledge. And we're about to go into another process and we're bringing more knowledge with us. So it's a time of learning and a time of reflection on our flaws and on the things that, um, that that we perceive like our perspective and that's what i feel like the the whole swords thing comes in because she's looking in she's looking deeply into her little container here which is like the cup of life or like the ark of the covenant that's what it kind of feels like to me it feels like a very um like a relic of some sort that she's looking into and it has two angels on the sides that are protecting sacred information and she's looking into it so this when it's inverted this could be a refusal to face the deeper aspects of ourself because scorpio always represents the things that are very very deep deep emotions that are buried beneath the surface um we have to like like i'm getting shrimp imagery because like it's a fish that crawls on the bottom of the floor it's like in the deep and it's down in the sand and it is this is a, an acknowledgement or a refusal or the the universe telling you like, hey, you have to stop the refusal to look at yourself and to look at these deep emotions, these deep traumas, these things that are causing you to repeat certain scenarios and certain situations that we can no longer take into this next journey because these are these are people who have died and they're looking upon this angel who's welcoming them to heaven and he's blowing the trumpets, but we also have to um, have our life flash before us and learn 
from our experiences before we can go into the next incarnation or the next phase of life. And, ace of, and aces always represent beginnings and possibilities and it's like a, a whole world of possibility in and of itself, but it's going to be one of righteousness, of truth, of balance, of lawfulness, of righteousness, um, and it also deals with the mind, like the getting the mind right, and um, we could be looking at a spiritual awakening here, and someone who is going to need to integrate the shadow and do shadow work and things of that nature. So let's uh, switch these guys out like I neglected to do in the last video. Um, so I'm just like randomly picking cards. We got that one. Ooh, we got the tower. Okay, so this card for me a lot of times is someone who is in a really good place, who came from a really bad place, and it's about celebrating and looking at that place that you never want to go to again. This is going to be some rough shit right here. So whenever you get two major arcana cards in a reading, there's something that needs to be translated, a message, a divine message that needs to be translated, something important that needs to be spoken about. Uh, it's like a, hey, make sure we talk about this in this reading type of thing, like pay attention. So it's definitely like a flag that you want to, um, just like a, a bell that's going to go off on your mind, like, hey, this is important. So the tower is always eruptive. It's, it's something that's sudden. It's unavoidable. It's like death in that way. Um, but sometimes we can see death coming. This is always going to be like a fast, quick reckoning and um, something that we're going to have to be able to look at ourselves and look at our flaws and we're going to have to be humbled. So this is definitely a movement from one place to the other, a drastic movement. This could be a, uh, an actual death that in a family that actually, sometimes death makes us think about things and it, get, it makes us very introspective and it can, the things that we learn from the death of people that are close to us can take us through a very hard time and bring us to a place eventually where we can celebrate that person's life or we can celebrate um, not ever having to be in that dark place again. Uh, and the reason why that is for me is this is Lord of Material Happiness, Jupiter in Pisces. And I feel like Pisces, for me, is always about your belief systems and uh, religion and um, dogmas and things that we perceive to be true. And that can change. That could change with one experience. We can see a ghost in our house and we could have been skeptics all of our lives, but that could change our whole perspective on how we view life and death or the occult or mystical things. Someone can um, die in front of us. We can actually witness a death. I saw, I was having margaritas one time with my sister and our friend and um, we were just sitting next to a window in a bar and a body flew past the window. We were on the second floor of this bar. It was the second floor of a building and we literally saw a body fly past the window and hit the floor. And we looked out the window and we saw what that was and that was like, that changed me forever seeing someone die gruesomely, horrifically, and tragically, just like that, like in the blink of an eye, like it really makes you think of things. So that's what this feels like for me. It feels like um, a, a specific event that takes place. Like it's going to be an event. It's not a theme. It's like an event that is going to shake your foundation and make you look at things a different way, but it's going to take you into a place where you're going to be a definitely a better person for it. It's going to change your, it's, it's material wealth. So it changes the material world. It changes the way you live. It's going to change the way you look at things. And the, when we change our perspective, it changes our whole entire way that we live. It completely, um, this is a paradigm change. Like when you change the way that you perceive things, you're, this is what people don't understand. You're, the material world changes around you. And that's, that's what I feel like this reading is about. So we have one more card. I uh, wish I can continue this video, but just in the continue in the same format that I did. I'm going to stop this video here and then just upload the next one. Uh, can't wait to be finished with this. And I hope you guys are learning and enjoying and, and working towards becoming your, your professional tarot readers. Um, 
it's, it's definitely a process. It's definitely has a lot to do with getting over fear and learning about yourself and learning about the cult and just integrating a lot of beautiful lessons. So good luck on that journey and I'll talk to you guys soon.